uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> consistent through the month of October <laughs> in my sinuses. I was not say nothing. Whatever. I, this is the best, <laughs> the best I have sounded this month. So I'll take it. Yeah, that's true. Um, coming with a message, uh, trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. If you I don't, don't know why, I don't. <laughs> I thought you were really about to say something. <laughs> Cause I'll pull down your underwear back to you. <laughs> I was really waiting. Uh, I thought you were going to mention what I just posted. Would you post? On our stories. I probably posted it last year, but it still stands. It better not be about candy corn. It is. <laughs> Throw it in the trash, in the trash. No. Trash. Oh, candy corn gets all the slander every year. Meanwhile, trash has. So, excuse me. Peanuts go by every year without slander, but that's because they're so bad that nobody even knows they exist. Like, I think people are like, I've seen it before, but it does not even recollect. Meanwhile, the <laughs> corn is just... But if you had to choose, what would you choose? Would you rather? Would you rather have circus peanuts or candy corn? Ah, uh, Don't lie. Can kill me be an option. I'd rather die. No, you have. <laughs> I will eat one, Whatever. one candy corn, one candy corn. No, you got to eat. No, I will eat one. You have to eat multiple. Corn. I will eat one candy Maybe corn. Maybe like five. Because I feel like if you put five together, it'll be the same size as the. Those That's circus peanuts it. are big. Those circus peanuts are big, but I'm not eating them. So I don't. <laughs> I ain't eating it. Okay. The great debate. You heard it here first. Brittany likes candy corn. No, that's not what she well. said. She <laughs> said she would rather die, but if she had to choose, <laughs> she said, kill me. But if <laughs> I have to choose. Candy corn. No more than five. Okay. That's fair. I say boo strangers no boo strangers i'm brit and i'm d welcome to another episode of it's a strange world after all well this is the podcast where we discuss true crime cases the supernatural urban legends conspiracy theories and all the things that keep the world strange I just, it came out boo-hoo-hoo because, of course, this is a sad day, <laughs> a sad day for me, and it is the final week of spooky season. That was why my boo-hoo-hoo came out. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah, I, I get that. Went by so fast. It went by so fast, and I just, it's just a lot. <laughs> yeah personally but um yeah it's final week of spooky season as you know it's our favorite time of year and all month long we've had a blast um yep. we dedicated all of our episodes to all hollows eve coming up um yeah so we're here i was just gonna ask you um not including this one because obviously we're recording this now but which one was your favorite oh um you want me to go first Oh, if you have it, go ahead. Of course, it's going to be the one before the Cole Adams house because I don't know, I just love a haunted house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that one was pretty, pretty spooky. That one was pretty spooky. I don't know. I liked all of them. Yeah. For content, like just as an episode as a whole, maybe Michael Taylor. Is it Michael Taylor? That's his name? Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. It's yeah. <laughs> I was about to say whoop. <laughs> As yeah. for episode sake, probably for me, Michael Turner, because I mean Taylor. Taylor. Who the hell? I went to school oh. with a guy named Michael Turner. That's why at first I thought I said his name. I went to school with a guy named Michael Turner. Oh, okay. You know who you are. Um <laughs> So in today's episode, we have a Halloween themed variety show. My favorites. I love the variety shows. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. So this episode is jam-packed with ghost stories, true crime, and the supernatural. Yes. Last season, we did a little bit of, I would say more so, holla, holla, I can't talk, <laughs> Halloween <laughs> traditions. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. This year. A little bit different. Um, I did find one Halloween tradition, but I was like, I think I want to research it more. It was like the idea of Halloween matchmaking and like how, yeah, and how women, I guess, apparently used to use Halloween to find a husband, like something about some acorns (laughs) and you throw them in a fire. Yeah. And then on Halloween night and then the next year, Halloween, you will find your husband. But I was like, I want to do some more research on that one. Yeah, that you one do I, that. Yeah. So <laughs> stay tuned next year. You Halloween say I need, acorns. You say I need some what? Some acorns? <laughs> Halloween, yeah, acorns. Uh, something about okay. shaving, apple shavings and throw them on the ground and it oh, that initials was, or something like that. That was on Charmed. Oh. You remember that episode where they got sent back? Because I guess they were trying to wipe out their ancestors and they got sent back to help her deliver the baby. And it was on Halloween and she like, I think it was, was it an apple? Yeah, it was an apple. And she put it in the water and it made a sea for coal. Yes. Okay. Then yeah, I, yeah, we can do next year for sure. Okay. Well, stay tuned until next year. (laughs) (laughs) Please. Please. (laughs) Okay. Starting off with me. Can I do it in an accent? Please don't. Okay. No, it's fine. Because <laughs> you said please, I won't. Because <laughs> you said please, I won't. Okay. <laughs> like you kind of <laughs> got hurt a little bit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I oh, expected okay. you to say no. But I mean, okay. the way you said it, it was actually pretty polite for you okay. the way that you said it. So I was okay. just like, okay, <laughs> she right. Um. Okay, this is technically considered a ghost story i mean halloween's not halloween without good campfire ghost story Mm -hmm. whatever ask a question yeah you can is it true like an actual ghost story no this one is not true this one is just a a ghost story that was submitted to the reader's digest like the one that i did last year oh okay okay so i should have said it was true though y'all wouldn't have known the difference it's true (laughs) It's true. It's actually happened to me. <laughs> this actually did happen to me. <laughs> okay, so this is the uninvited party guest from the Reader's Digest. One night, a group of adults were engaged in a dinner party. There were six of them in attendance, and they had all just taken their seats when they heard an unexpected knock at the door. You did that at a perfect time. It sounded like a knock. I was about to what go. What I do? You put your glass down and it sounded like oh. a knock. I was just <laughs> about to go. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> the woman hosting the dinner party opened the door to see who it could be, but no one was there. Somebody must have realized they had the wrong address, she explained to her guests. But when they all turned their attention back to the table, they noticed a seventh plate set. I must have set an extra place by mistake, said the hostess. She took it back to the kitchen, but when she returned, another plate was there, this time with a glass next to it. So here's whoever it was was trying to get turned. (laughs) (laughs) The other guests had been talking among themselves and hadn't seen anything strange. But when they realized what had happened, they were shocked and didn't know what to do. At this point, they figured the best strategy was to play along. So they filled the empty glass and plate so as not to upset their mysterious uninvited party guest. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, because I was going to say, but you clarified it though. So she went to the door. She came back and it was an extra plate. And then she took it to the kitchen and came back and it was another plate. Right. That's what this time with a glass. Yeah, with a glass next to it. How everybody must have been drunk because how do you not notice that? They were just enthralled. And then, yeah, how did it did it float over there? Did it (laughs) it manifest? Yeah. Yeah. Did it just appear? I don't know. I don't know. What would you do, though? If you was you were hosting a party and it happened to you, I, honestly, I probably would have did what they did. 
Yeah. Yeah. But after after it was over, I would have, you know, got my sage. Because clearly something, she technically it was uninvited, but it kind of was invited because she opened the door. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So I would cleanse after that, but I probably would have did what they did. Yeah. Agree. She let it in. I would have done what you say. You could just tell it to leave. Like I would have been like, mm-hmm. okay, everybody go home. That means you spooky ghost, demon, whatever, <laughs> whoever you can go yeah. to. Cause yeah. it might be like a, what if it's like an animal and like once you feed it, <laughs> it keep coming back. <laughs> Possible. Oh yeah. And you said you got this from uh what readers digest. Yes. Uh, hmm. It's where I get a lot of my, my ghost my ghost stories or my urban legends and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So my first story is, I guess this would be, because I was like, is this true crime? Because we don't know what happened. So I guess it would be like an unsolved mystery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dang it. I wish I would have put that in the intro. Unsolved mystery. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the case of Stephen Damon. I think that's how you say it. Damn, man. Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) That is not. (laughs) Okay, Stephen Damon was born on December 5th, 1952 in Kalkaska, Michigan. His father, Jerry, was in the Air Force and was stationed in Long Island. So on October 31st, Halloween, 1955, Marilyn Damon and her two children, seven-month-old Pamela and two-year-old Stephen, went shopping in East Meadow in Nassau County, New York. They went to the supermarket on Front Street and Merrick Avenue to buy a loaf of bread. The market was only two blocks from their home. They arrived at around 2.30 p.m., and Marilyn left her children outside of the store while she ran in to get the bread. Marilyn was only in the store for a few minutes. I mean, wait, 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 (laughs) wait. What? The children were, was only two and seven months old. Yes. So they were probably in like a stroller too, right? Uh, Yeah, Stephen was in his stroller. Why would you just leave? Even if it was for a couple of minutes, I wouldn't Wait, leave no, them no, there no. for a couple Pamela of minutes. Pamela was in the stroller. Pamela was the girl. So oh, yeah, yeah, she was in the stroller. Yeah. Stephen was just there. Yeah. Why she, why she leave them? <sighs> I mean, this was in the 50s. People did stuff like that. But oh yeah, it kind of comes back up later. When she came back out, her children, of course, weren't there. An officer who was passing by noticed a distressed Marilyn and asked her what the problem was. He called in a report and all police cars in the area were alerted. A few moments later, an officer saw an unattended stroller behind a store about a block from the supermarket. Seven-month-old Pamela was sleeping peacefully inside the stroller. However, there was no sign of Stephen. There was a possibility that he just wandered off and got lost. So that's what they were thinking. By the end of the day, nearly 5,000 officers and volunteers were searching for Stephen. Two days later, Nassau County police reclassified the case as a kidnapping and the search was called off. So now they're investigating. Okay. I don't, maybe I should save this. I just feel like, I don't think that's what happened, but go ahead. Because I feel like (laughs) even at two, two two-year-olds are like pretty protective of their siblings. Like they realize that, okay, this is my sibling. I should protect. Like, Yeah, but we don't. You think that's what happened? I I honestly don't know. Oh, man. Because this whole thing is just weird. It is weird. That is weird. Yeah. Police had nothing to go on and even called in the FBI, but there was no trace of Stephen. A month later, the family received a ransom note demanding $3,000 for Stephen's safe return. The note told didn't... You. Huh? <laughs> I said, I told you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> just wander off, but go ahead. <laughs> I don't think he just wandered off. Yeah. The note didn't give any information on how the money was to be paid or how Stephen would be returned. A short time later, they received a second note from the same person demanding $10,000 and then a third note demanding $14,000. You good? <laughs> you see that? You see this yes. spooky shit? <laughs> 
I don't know what's yes. happening. I don't know if it's the spirit of Halloween or what. Y'all, my light, my ring light is flickering. I don't know why, though. I've never had this issue before. I could just see it out the corner of my eye while I was reading. I was like, what if you would have looked up and my seat was just empty? <laughs> Like, what do you do? Like, do you oh, try to call? Oh, my God. Don't, do don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh, man. Because then I, well, first I would think you were trying to prank me. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like you would. Now I, now I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have okay. to move really fast, too. Like, I have to oh, be like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just look up and your chair is spinning. <laughs> <laughs> you just see your hair. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Where was I? Detectives traced the notes to Robert Fontaine. Robert had nothing to do with Stephen's disappearance and was only trying to extort money from the family. So. Oh, never mind. I take yeah. back. I take back what I said. <laughs> Robert was arrested by the FBI in October of 1956 and charged with attempting to extort money from the Damons. Stupid. Yeah. In May 1956, a young boy was found abandoned at an Arizona gas station. Initially, it was believed that this could be Stephen, but it turned out to be a boy that was just abandoned by his family. So that boy, he was around the same age and they abandoned him because he was mentally disabled and they didn't want. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that is messed up. It is messed up. In the years following Stephen's disappearance, Marilyn and Jerry's marriage became strained. Jerry blamed her for what happened because he had told her in the past to stop leaving the children outside of the stores while she shopped. I mean, come on. Get it together. Yeah, apparently he had to keep telling her that. Come on, Marilyn. (laughs) They... (laughs) They divorced in 1957, but eventually remarried. So they got back together. Mm -hmm. In 2009, John Barnes from Michigan claimed that he was Stephen. John said that he suspected his family wasn't his birth family. He believed his mother indicated to him that she wasn't his biological mother while on her deathbed. He began researching missing children born in the 50s and found Stephen's story. The FBI tested his DNA and found no relation at all to the Damon family. If Stephen is alive, as of 2022, he would be 70 years old. He would have blue eyes, a scar under his chin, and a birthmark on his left calf. What happened to Stephen? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that why is. didn't they take the baby? Like, why'd they leave the baby? Was it too much to have both of them? That's that's what I didn't understand because, yeah, why would they leave the baby? Not unless he really did wander off. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Because it happens so fast that maybe if somebody did take them, maybe they noticed all the police and panicked and just took Steven and left the baby. Oh, because then that's true. Because yeah. then they'd be looking for, they wouldn't necessarily be looking for him. They'd be looking for the baby and him. Yeah. So, yeah, that one, I was like, that whole thing is just crazy. That thing, that is crazy. I think missing children's cases are crazy in general. Like, Yeah. What? And then, yeah, this one, there was not a lot of information because I was trying to look into the mom. Because, like, why why do you keep leaving your kids outside the store? Yeah, exactly. Even after your, your husband kept telling you not to do it. I wouldn't have went back to her. I would have took. I would have left her, and I would have took. Um, what's the baby name? The Pamela. other baby, Pamela. I would she have took had Pamela. A wrong woman name. <laughs> she, you know, she was. You know, this is back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have took Pamela yep. and left. That's yeah. crazy. Because I heard about this one a long time ago, but I was like kind of waiting to see if anything else would like come out. But that's all I could find. That was a good one. I feel, again, I feel treated, not tricked. (laughs) Good. Okay, moving on. uh, Freddy Krueger shooting. You all may be familiar with the popular slasher film, 
well, it's a series, right? It's a series. Franchise. Franchise. The franchise. A Nightmare on Elm Street, where a disfigured murderer, Freddy Krueger, preys on his victims with a glove made of claw-like razors, tormenting them in their sleep, causing them to perish in real life. His skin is severely burned, and he wears gloves, a fedora, and a red and green striped sweater. The Fun facts. Times, oh, huh? Ah, striped <laughs> sweater. <laughs> it's all the time. <laughs> um, no, I was going to say, fun fact, one of my favorite scenes from a slasher movie is in, I think, the original, when he kills the girl, and she like, like, is that where she, like, oh, is on, which, like, the ceiling or something? Yeah. You know, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah. and he, like, and then it's just, like, <laughs> Yeah. One of my favorite scenes in a slasher film. On October 30th, 2016, in San Antonio, Texas, represent <laughs> a man who was dressed as a fictional serial killer, Freddy Krueger, appeared uninvited at a Halloween party at about 5 a.m. Can I, I just question- say... Oh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You I, go ahead. how can you party until five in the morning? What? I they was partying till five man. in the morning, five in the morning. I was like, dang, they that was, was a bump on something. They was on something. A bump. Maybe. <laughs> man. It was definitely a bump in house party. That's for sure. Yeah. So the host of the party didn't recognize the man or the other two men he was with. So as he should, he refused to let them in. That's when the men pushed past the host, forcing themselves inside the house, and a physical altercation ensued. A fight. They had a fist fight. It was a rumble <laughs> in the jungle. At some point during the fight, Freddy Krueger pulled a gun from his costume and started firing. In other articles, they said it was a shotgun, but in my mind, I was like, where the hell did he hide the shotgun? How could you yeah. get a shotgun in that costume? Yeah, I don't know. Because he doesn't wear like a coat yeah. or anything. Mm-mm. No. I'm going to just say it was a gun. Um, and then he started firing, and five people were hit, four males and one female. The neighbors heard the multiple gunshots along with the partygoers' screams and called the police. The suspects immediately fled. And like in the different articles I read, a couple of neighbors gave their like statements and were saying it was just like chaos. Like the people were running out of the house. There were some people trying to run to help people. Yeah. Shortly after the incident, 22-year-old Robert Contreras was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. All five of the party goers he shot survived. So that was a good thing. Yeah. Yes. I just thought that was interesting and kind of ironic because you were dressed up like Freddy Krueger. Like, that's what the headline was. It was like, Freddy Krueger shoots yeah. five people. Yeah. And I was like, huh? Yeah. What? And I, because I was going to pick this one, but I was like, no, I already got my two stories. But because I was going to pick this one actually last year. But then I was like, um, but I'm glad you picked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Because it was a similar incident. It wasn't in San Antonio, but who was he dressed as? Somebody dressed as one of them. Probably Michael Myers shot up a party too. That kind of sounds familiar. Like maybe I stumbled across that too. Yeah. And his name was Robert. And the guy who plays Freddy Krueger, his name is Robert. What? Yeah. Mind blown. <laughs> And then I did, um, if y'all want to scroll through our Instagram, I did a strange, was it? Yeah, I did a strange Saturday about the true story behind the movie. Oh, uh, behind. Yeah. Uh, behind A Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, that one. Like, wh- why? He he had to have already been planning on doing that because why would you just show up to a party with a gun? A party that you're not invited to. I feel like he, yeah, he was looking for something. Probably, to get especially into. if it was a shotgun, because who just yeah. carried? Like, who carries that on their person? And then it was five in the morning. They were probably drunk, but yeah, it's five in the morning. Go to Waffle House like everybody else. Go to Waffle <laughs> House or IHOP. <laughs> Chill yeah. out. Yeah, that one was a good one. Okay, here's my my second story is about the Baird family. So I have to give a. Trigger warning, 
on this one because it does mention suicide. This is another uh, true story. So it does mention suicide. So trigger warning. In 1965, Howard Baird moved his wife, Johnny, nicknamed John, and their teenage son, Andy, to a home in Tyler, Texas, after they both retired. That's her real name, is Johnny. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. (laughs) That bothered you? (laughs) Yes, it does, but go ahead. (laughs) Oh, my God. It truly does. And this is no, um, they have nothing to do with uh, Mrs. Barrett's bread. So, oh man, yeah. I didn't even think so, about that. Isn't that based out of Texas too? I think so, but they have nothing. It's spared the. I, was, I can't even talk either. It's, it's spelled. The, it's not even spared. <laughs> it's spelled different. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shout out Tyler. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Howard decided it was time for them to retire because John began showing signs of having mental issues and thought a change of scenery would help. Around this time, strange and frightening events began to take place. So this is pretty much as soon as they moved in. Yeah. So at night, John would sleep alone while Howard and their son, Andy, would sleep in another room. And it's it's a little weird to me because they did sleep in the same bed because he was a teenager around this time, like early teens. So the Uh, mom was sleeping in the master bedroom by herself and the dad and the son was sleeping in the other bedroom in the same bed. Oh, that is a little weird. Or yeah, why wouldn't they sleep in the master bed? Yeah. Howard said that as soon as he turned off the light, they were plagued with hordes of June bugs of all sizes. Say what? I would (laughs) die. (laughs) I would Ah! die. (laughs) <laughs> then like they like June bugs are disrespectful they're they not even are. like a polite they like slap wherever Man. Like, they just plop uh, look the bugs flew around the room hitting them in the face and head <laughs> <laughs> Howard claimed that they flew with such force that it stung when they were hit so yeah, yeah. disrespectful right So when Howard turned the lights back on, the bugs stopped flying. But when he turned the lights back off, hundreds of bugs would start hitting them again. Oh, my gosh. Question. Mm -hmm. Would it be like they disappeared when he turned on the lights or they would still be there? They just they would still be there. They just wasn't moving. The hell? Yeah. This was a repeated thing. This is something that would happen often. Why were they still sleeping in there? I would have been like, Mom. (laughs) I'm sleeping with you. I don't understand. This is like last week's episode. Why are you still sleeping in this room? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. What? And this story has a lot. I didn't put it in here because it was long enough already, but this story is crazy. So the next morning, this was after one night. So the next morning, there were so many dead bugs that they had to vacuum them up. They noticed that not only were there thousands of dead June bugs, but most of them looked like they had been dead for weeks. So they were like shriveled up. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. This has, I mean, it kind of has to do with it. You remember, I don't know. I think I was turning seven. You remember that hotel we stayed at for my slumber party? With all those crickets. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I'm triggered. (laughs) I am triggered. Yeah, I remember. (laughs) So this is happening pretty much, I wouldn't say every night, but a lot of nights. So during all of this activity, John's mental health got worse and they decided it would be best for her to live with her sister for a while. So her sister, I mean, it wasn't that far. It was still in Texas, but I don't think it was Tyler. So they just sent her to live with her sister. Shortly after she left, Howard and Andy were, so they were um, still sleeping in the same room in the same bed. So Howard and Andy were lying down in the room one night talking about, you know, everything that was happening. Suddenly, Howard heard a high-pitched voice calling his name. The voice said that it was John, but it sounded nothing like her. In the following weeks, they heard six other voices seemingly out of nowhere. Howard recognized five of them, and they were all from people 
who had passed away. So people that Mm. he knew that passed away. Yeah. One night while trying to sleep, they felt something on their arms and in their hair. They jumped up and found several slugs in the bed. I mean, again, come on, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. Uh, I would have moved after the June bugs, but man. (laughs) Another day, Howard was eating and a note fell on the table. So the way that they described it, it was a show that I watched too. The way that they described it, they would just be sitting at the table eating or watching TV and notes would just fall out of the sky. Well, not the sky, but Whoa. like fall from the yeah. ceiling, basically. Howard claimed that as many as 10 to 15 notes would appear from thin air as if they were falling from the ceiling. One of the notes said, Howard, I will kill Junior for you. Do you want me to? He mustn't go back. And they would receive hundreds of these notes. After three years of paranormal activity, the family finally moved out of the house. So, yeah, they dealt with long enough. Yeah, I was going to say they dealt with all that for three years. Everything seemed fine for the first couple of years. Andy's sister, who I I don't know where she came from, but um, Andy's (laughs) sister, (laughs) Amy, reached out to Hans Holzer. Hans is known as the first as the very first ghost hunter. And he was the one who investigated the case and convinced them to move out. So he has a, well, he doesn't have a show. He's deceased, but there's a show that comes on discovery. It's called Mm -hmm. Hoser files. And it's, um, his daughter. And then another ghost hunter, they just basically go over like his old cases Mm. and like follow up and stuff. It's a good, it's a pretty good show. So, um, Andy's sister wrote a letter to him saying that Andy believed he was possessed by the devil. Andy insisted that the devil talked to him constantly and was convinced nothing could be done to help him. Before Hans could make it back to Tyler, Texas, Andy unfortunately committed suicide. So that, if you research this case, you're not going to find that, but they mentioned it on the show. So this oh, okay. is coming from, yeah. Because I got... um. A lot of this from the book that he wrote, because he has hundreds of books. That's how many cases he investigated. Hans said that out of all of the cases he has investigated, this one haunts him the most. Man. Yeah, and it's crazy because on the show, so when he did his investigations, he took a medium with him. And they play like some of the recordings of her. Her voice is just creepy because it's not... It's not her talking, like her voice changes because it's like the dead are speaking through her. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so it's... Does does it sound like the it's the strange world after all? Is that what it kind of sound like? Wait, when I, when I said you sound like an old person? I mean, yeah, or just <laughs> whatever. It sounds like, to me, yeah, kind of like that. And then some of them, to me, it oh, sounds okay. like... The stereotypical, like how you think a witch would sound. Oh. Yeah. Like, ah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to watch that episode, it's on Discovery. It's on a show called Holzer Files, and the name of the episode is The Devil in Texas. Okay, I'm going to have to watch that. I need to stop playing Sims and start watching (laughs) (laughs) Watching stuff like that again. Yeah, because I remember... When I first saw that episode, it creeped me out. Yeah. For you to say that, that means it's serious. Okay. Yeah. Holzer. Holzer. Yeah. H-O-L-Z-E-R. Gotcha. I'm going to definitely look into that. Yeah. So he's, I mean, and to be fair, I think he is like the very first ghost hunter because he was doing, this was like back in the, so this case was what I said, the 50s. So yeah, he started doing this like in, Oh, no, this was 65. So he was doing this, like, in the 50s, but, yeah. So, like, before Ed and Lorraine? Mm Mm-hmm. Or probably around the same time. But technically, Ed and Lorraine are not ghost hunters. They're, um, she's a medium and he's a demonologist. A self-proclaimed demonologist. Yeah. I mean, how else? Or do you go to school for that? I don't know. I mean, how else do you? Oh, okay. I say that because... 
just research him. Research yeah, it's them. Question- it's yeah. questionable. They're questionable. Yeah. And then, oh, and on the episode about this story, they do interview his sister. Andy, they do interview his sister. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for that. You're welcome. Obviously, I was invested. <laughs> All right. And last but certainly not least, we have Haunted House. Haunted House. Haunted House. <laughs> what is wrong again, with us today? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to breathe. Man. Uh, Haunted House, again, from uh, the Reader's Digest. There was a house in a small neighborhood in Maryland that went overboard with Halloween decorations every year. Whenever the crisp fall air rolled in, the entire town would look forward to the unveiling of the new display. So this house didn't come to play. They didn't come to play. But no one ever really talked to the person who did the actual decorating. He was a loner. People only knew him for his Halloween spirit. And his decorations became grander and more lifelike each year. The newest one was a Vlad the Impaler theme. Hyper-realistic, bloodied mannequins were pierced through with wooden stakes and left to the crows in a gruesome display. This is... (laughs) Okay, so even when you do see people who go overboard, Mm -hmm. they don't do that. Vlad the Impaler, really? (laughs) Like, this? that's real. Yeah. Like... All the other decorations you see are like from movies or I saw one they had. Did you see the Stranger Things? The man that set his yard up and had the girl floating. I was like, how did he do that? What, like an actual girl? Yeah. No, it was a. Um, oh, <laughs> I was like, why? <laughs> no, but I'm saying they normally do stuff like that. Nobody takes it that far because Vlad the Impaler, like he's like known as like the first vampire i don't think he was drinking blood though but he was killing people so that's real oh i get what you're saying it's because technically he was a real person and he themed it it would be like if because the whole thing that's trending now is jeffrey Dahmer. so i'll use that yeah so oh yeah i didn't think about that d yeah that's just weird to me it is weird. Sidebar, if you guys haven't seen the curse of bridge hollow on netflix the marlon wayne's movie watch it it's good. I didn't think I was going to like it I because it was a family movie. And I was like, yeah. Marlon Wayans and a family. Like, you know, like, I know he's done I mean, like some stuff. Yeah. But I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but it was good. I have to watch it. I was waiting on it. I didn't even know it was out yet. I said that it reminded me of that movie because that town was like big on Halloween. And that's what they did. They everybody would pick a theme that year oh okay to to do to decorate their house and i was like dang i want to live in this neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> and look i oh, saw God. you know how um when you asked like where would we want to celebrate halloween and i said mm-hmm. salem did you say salem too yeah or no but there I said, was yeah, a, I agree. okay there was a tiktok and it literally looked like hocus pocus like the first yeah. one yeah did you see that uh, no, I didn't see the TikTok, but I believe you. Like, everybody was just walking around, like, in their costumes, dressed like witches. I was like, oh, we got to uh, go. We yeah. got to go. I need to move. At first, I thought it was a scene from Hocus Pocus. I thought somebody was just posting. <laughs> like, and they're nah, like, no, nah, y'all, life. this is Salem. <laughs> oh. Yes. I love it. Okay, so he's widely known for being an inspiration behind Dracula. Yes, that's what I was like that. That's a real person. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah, you could have just put Dracula out there. That's true. Red flags right there. Okay, it was the ultimate work of horror. So much so that it caused quite the controversy in the town. While some loved it, many of the local parents wanted it taken down for their children's sake. So a town official made the trip to the house soon after the unveiling to discuss the matter with the man who lived there. So the town official knocked on the front door. No answer. Knock on the front door. (laughs) Nothing. So she rang the doorbell. Nothing still. It was then that the official realized there was a putrid smell in the yard and an unusual amount of bugs buzzing around for this time of year. She wandered over to one of the mannequins to get a closer look at the incredible craftsmanship. 
the smell got worse. She gagged and had to put her hand over her mouth. Her eyes went wide. The official put her trembling finger up to the doll and felt the smooth, cold touch of human skin. After that, no one was able to locate the man who'd once lived there. Now it is truly a haunted house. You know what? I thought that it was going to be the man who lived there, but then people would realize that that was him. So he just killed somebody and fled, basically. Yeah, basically. Um, man. And from what I gather, he might have killed more than one person because there are multiple man- mannequins. There were multiple. Yeah. Yeah. So it could have been Is this story one. true? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> That's the magic. No, um, I asked <laughs> because I thought it was going to be. So there's multiple stories. Well, I say multiple, but probably like two or three where people have thought that it was Halloween decorations and it was actually dead bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know one, it was the homeowner that committed suicide. So they were like hanging from a tree. And I think another one was like a decapitated body in the front yard. So it's been like real stories like that. Yeah, that was a good one. Because as soon as you said Vlad the Impaler, I was like, something is not right. What? <laughs> something Next is not year, right. Next year, I'm doing Ted Bundy. No, you can't. Like, somebody's <laughs> like, they have, like, the beetle, like, the the car. And then, like, no, you can't do that. Like, no. It's not okay. Yeah. I, and then did you see people are actually buying Jeffrey Dahmer costumes. I'm like, y'all are sick. Oh my God. They're just insensitive. Yeah. We can go in and close this thing out. Close this thing, thing, thing. (laughs) That's what it made me think of. Um. (laughs) I feel like we had some good stories again this year. I think so too. It was a good, it was a good October month. Mm-hmm. I shall say I'm sad to say it's so hard <laughs> to say goodbye <laughs> to the month of October. I am not, but um. <laughs> alas, <laughs> that is all, folks. Please follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast, Twitter at Pod Strange World, and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World. After all. Also, if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and like the show, please go ahead and give us a five-star rating. And if you're feeling extra strange, please write a review. Please Please. and thank you. Yes, we would love to hear from you. What did you think of this week's episode? Also, if there's anything else in the world of strange or true crime cases that you would like us to cover, let us know. If you have any personal stories involving true crime or the supernatural, we would love to have you on the show and share them with our listeners. Don't forget that we are introducing movie reviews of the horror, thriller, slasher, and true crime genre. So if you have any movies or documentaries and want to hear our uncensored, unsolicited opinions on them, let us know by this point it will be out the bonus episode (laughs) will be out by this point you can email those submissions to it's a strange world after all.com or dm us at any other social media platforms d mentioned even if you just want to say hey there we'll be here not spooky (laughs) not trying to scare you not boo strangers but we'll be here yeah i mean we'll still have the occasional spooky stuff but you know oh no yeah i forgot we are still spooky it's just not gonna be in the name of halloween yeah but hey whatever (laughs) thank you for tuning into another episode of it's a strange world after all And thank you, as always, for keeping it strange with us. We'll see you. See you next month. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Shorty.